I think these are the best meatballs in the whole world because they are so flavorful. They're really tender and there's so much going on there. They're not bready, but there's a softness to them and you're gonna wanna eat these right out of the pot. Hi, I'm Deb and welcome back to The Smitten Kitchen. Today we are making my everyday meatballs, which are going to be the last recipe for meatballs you ever need. They are their own star. You don't even need spaghetti. We're gonna use some pepper, parsley, parmesan, salt, onion powder, milk, pepper flakes, eggs, whatever you like to use for meatballs. This is a mixture of beef and pork, plain breadcrumbs, olive oil, a can of crushed tomatoes, garlic, and a little bit of dried oregano. Once again, use whatever kind of meat you like for meatballs. I've made this with turkey too. Turkey is definitely nicer if you use a slightly fattier ground meat, like don't use the all white meat. This is a mixture of beef and pork, which is kind of the best here. We're gonna use half a cup of plain dry breadcrumbs. I actually made these from leftover bread, but panko style works great too. We're gonna add some milk. If you don't wanna use milk in your meatballs, that's fine. You could use broth or water instead. We are going to add one teaspoon of salt, a few grinds of black pepper, a little bit of crushed pepper flakes. I gotta go easy on these. <laughs> these are very spicy, the ones I have right now, and I love them, but I'm also trying to feed kids and I wanna make sure they eat it. And we're gonna use half a teaspoon of onion powder, and this to me is one of the secret ingredients because instead of having like nubby bits of onion all over or having to cook onion and then cool it or like grate it, which always makes me cry. <laughs> I feel like the onion powder really nicely flavors the whole thing without adding any texture. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. Once again, if you don't want any kind of dairy product in your meatballs, you can skip it. But if you don't mind, it's very good here. And then I'm just gonna chop a little bit of parsley and I'm gonna roll it up and give it a rough chop. What about two chopped tablespoons here? Just gives it a really nice color. And also makes my five-year-old go, I don't wanna eat that, that's green. Going in. And we're gonna use garlic twice here. We're gonna use it in the sauce and we're also gonna use it in the meatballs. And put it right in. And the last thing we're gonna put in this, we're gonna crack two eggs into here. And that holds it all together. Something's going on with the eggs today. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I think that's about as pretty as a mixture of ground meat and ingredients could look, don't you think? I mean, this is about as good as it's gonna get. And then I just use a fork to mash everything together. I'm gonna make it into one homogenous mixture. No need to overmix. just make sure everything gets in. You don't wanna use a fork, you could use a potato masher. That's a really great technique. I went saw a chef do. You can use your hands. I'm not gonna use my hands. <laughs> so I feel like that would be Nana approved. Get it all in, make sure there's no eggy bits unmixed. I'm using a small scoop here, but you could use a spoon. This will make like one and a half inch meatballs. You can make them bigger. They're totally flexible. It's up to you. I make a little scoop. I just go like this. I find it easier to form if I have wet hands. I love this size because they're just, they're very easy to eat. Maybe two bite meatballs. Do you eat meatball subs? Have you ever made a meatball sub before? I feel like that was definitely a thing where I was growing up, meatball subs. I'm gonna finish forming all the meatballs until <laughs> next time. I'm gonna finish forming all the meatballs and then I'm gonna just pop them in the fridge while I build the foundation for the sauce. Actually, I'm building the sauce. It's not just the foundation. We're gonna put these in the fridge for a little while and then we'll start the sauce. We'll start with two tablespoons of olive oil. Let that warm up. One clove of garlic. This is our second one left over from before. Just a pinch of pepper flakes. I love a little bit of dried oregano in a sauce. I feel like it really adds an extra perfume. But the meatballs will very much be the star here. So this sauce doesn't need a whole lot to work. I'm gonna cook this just until it's sizzly. I don't wanna brown the garlic at all. I just wanna like get slight golden edges to it and a really nice nose. So you can definitely smell it in the oil infusing. This has a nice toasty smell. This is gonna make a big hiss splatter. We're gonna add the can of tomatoes. Step back, it's going to splash. 
Oh yeah. Lots of drama. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt. I love using crushed canned tomatoes because I feel like it gets you very quickly to a sauce consistency, but this isn't pureed. There's still a little texture to it, but I like it because if the sauce isn't too chunky, it does hold onto the meatballs nicely. A too chunky sauce tends to fall off. I want the meatballs to be the star. So we're gonna simmer this for a few minutes just until it starts looking. This is the technical term, okay? So write it down. We want it to look saucy. <laughs> Sorry dad joke hour. <laughs> so it's simmering along, simmer. Um, the sauce is simmering along nicely and we are gonna go add the meatballs directly to the sauce. These meatballs have chilled just while I was building the sauce. One of the best parts about this recipe is the fact that you don't have to fry the meatballs. I'm not saying that frying meatballs first isn't good, but it makes a big mess and it's not always practical for a weeknight. These go directly in the sauce and you let them cook in there and then you get more meatballs in your life. Meatballs in your life more often. All right, I'm gonna just drop these in one by one. All the meatballs went in. I'm gonna put the lid on and we are gonna set the timer for 25 minutes and the only rule is that you don't need to touch them. Don't stir it. Don't move them around. They'll set up perfectly in the sauce if you leave them alone. These have been simmering for 25 minutes and they look so good. The best thing to do right now, cut the heat for a moment. And like I promised you, if you leave them alone, they're gonna set up nicely and they did. I'm just gonna cut into this and make sure it's cooked in the center. It is. Trust the recipe. I have the best job. Mm. 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 These meatballs are not going to share the spotlight with anything. They are perfect. They are so seasoned. They're so flavorful. They're perfectly cooked. And you know what they're really good on? Just saying. Da -da -da -da. They're really good on garlic bread. Because the best move, you go like this, maybe nobody wants to see my finger and my food. You give it a little smash, just like that. A little more cheese, a little more parsley. You have the very most perfect bite of food you could ever eat. <laughs> mm. Oh my God. These are everyday, any day meatballs. I came up with this recipe shortly after I had one of my kids and I was tired and I craved hearty food and I didn't want to work that hard for it. There was no way I was gonna have a newborn child sleeping in a Bjorn frying meatballs on a weekday night. This recipe was the perfect solution. I could cook them right in the sauce. I could get it done. They work really well for real lives. Make sure you subscribe. Let us know if you've made the meatballs. How do you make them? Do you make any adaptations? What do you serve them with? How often do you make them? If you're gonna make them for the first time, I wanna hear all about it in the comments. Anna, what am I making? <laughs> I don't know. What does it look like to you? Meatballs. Are you gonna eat them? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> 